Hello, I'm Mark Enns with the Department of Animal Sciences at Colorado State University. Today's audiovisual presentation is from the EPD 101 series, and we're going to learn about how to interpret EPD. Now, EPD, or expected progeny differences, are tools that are available through the Alpaca Owners Association that represent the genetic merit of individuals you might use in your breeding program. So with that, let's get started. Okay. And so in this brief audiovisual presentation, we're going to go through two examples. When we start to think about EPD, what we're doing is using those tools for traits, so uh, characteristics like fiber diameter or fleece weight or standard deviation of fiber diameter, staple length, those are the traits. We have EPDs for those, and EPD re represent the genetic merit of an individual and predict what we would expect in progeny performance due to, the due to the genes that are passed from the parent to the offspring. Okay, so in this example, what I have are two sires. We'll just call them A and B, and they're out of uh, the uh, Huacaya evaluation. And one sire for fiber diameter has a minus 2.1 EPD. The other sire that you might use, the other male you might use in your breeding program, has a plus 0.2. Okay? When we interpret EPD, all we're looking at is the difference in the EPD. So in this case, the difference in those two is a minus 2.3. Okay? And what that tells us then, if you're trying to decide which of these two you might use in your breeding program, it tells us that progeny of sire A are going to have, on average, 2.3 micron smaller fiber diameter than the average of sire B's progeny. Okay? Now, in this, we're assuming that you're not doing preferential matings because we're looking only at the genes that are passed from sire to the offspring. So we're assuming that both sires have the opportunity to be mated to females of similar genetic merit. So you're not preferentially mating sire A or sire B uh, to different groups of animals. This is if they were mated to the same genetic type females, we would expect this difference to occur on average in the progeny of those two sires. And obviously we're assuming similar environmental conditions because what EPD, EPD boils the animal do, down to the genetics that w it will contribute to the next generation of animals in your breeding program. Now, it's important to remember that this, when we look at an animal's EPD, it only considers the genetics that animal would pass to the next generation. We're not looking with an EPD about how that animal is used or what females it is mated to. And I know I keep reinforcing that, but that's important when we go about interpreting uh, EPD. Okay, so that was for fiber diameter. So let's look at another example, this time with fleece weight. Okay, so let's say those same two sires, one of those had a plus 1.1 EPD for fleece weight, and the other one had a minus 0 0.2 EPD for fleece weight. Well, again, we're back to taking the difference in these sires, and the difference would be 1.3 pounds of fleece weight. And so we're looking at this from the standpoint of the genes these animals will contribute to the next generation and the average performance of their progeny resulting from the transfer of those genes. And so in this case, Sire A would produce Crea whose fleece weight would be on average 1.3 pounds heavier than the progeny of Sire B. Now, of course, remember EPDs for fleece weight assume the animal is at least nine months of age and older. And so we would apply that to that age category when we start to think about the differences in fleece weight. And again, this doesn't take into account the differences in the females that those sires could have been mated to. It's looking at this only from the perspective of the genes these sires will pass on to the next generation and the differences that will result from the, the, the sire's genes being passed on. And it represents an average difference in performance that we would expect from those progeny all e else equal, of course.
Okay, And so one of the things when you start to think about EPD that I often hear about is, is what goes into the calculation of EPD. The information that's included in an EPD includes pedigree information. For the Alpaca Owners Association, we take animals in the program with an observation and we include any animal in their ancestry back three generations. Now realizing of course that not all animals have three generations of pedigree because they might trace back to the original importation. We also account for differences in sex of the animal, the age of the animal, we use the date of birth and the, the date the fiber sample was collected. We look at that individual performance data that originally came from the Yoakum uh, McCall Laboratory. We look at breeder submitted data, birth and fleece weight in the current analysis are submitted directly by the breeders. And we do uh, look uh, for data integrity and make sure that we have reasonable values associated with each of those traits. And then we use contemporary group information uh, that includes who the owner is, who the farm is, who, where the farm is, who submitted the information, and the year of, uh, of uh, that data collection, which obviously goes into calculating age. And then if you're interested, uh, there's another module on what does a contemporary group do for us from the standpoint of selection? Okay, the ultimately, the animal information that we use is based on an animal's own performance, data that's been submitted and contributed to the database. We look at pedigree information, as I've alluded to previously, and so information on collateral relatives of an individual may influence its EPD because we know they share genes in common. For instance, if you have a particular animal in your program that has a half sib, maybe they're related through the sire or uh, you've sold a female and it produced crea in another operation, another breeding program, those animals would share 25% uh, of their genes in common because, because they got them from the same parent. As such, we know they should perform similarly, so we can use one animal's information to improve the accuracy of another animal's EPD as long as they're related. And then finally, the ultimate source of data is progeny information, and that is the performance records for all of the traits you collect information on from birth weight and fleece weight through to the normal traits recorded and reported uh, through the histogram information. So those are really the three key sources of information that we incorporate in an EPD. And so that's how EPD are interpreted and some of the information that is used in the calculation of EPD. Thank you.